Once upon a time, there was a friendly troll who lived beneath a bridge in the middle of a forest. Many animals would cross his bridge, and being a chatty troll, he would talk to those travellers and ask where they were going. Many of them would reply, To the other side, because everyone knows that the grass is always greener on the other side. When he'd first heard those words, the troll had been bewildered because the grass looked just as green on both sides of the river. But the animal said it so often that he began to wonder if he should cross the bridge to the other side too and go looking for that greener grass. Perhaps there was even a better bridge over that way. He would often gaze into the distance with his thoughts on that far away land with its bountiful acres of beautiful grass. He imagined magnificent bridges arcing over gently flowing rivers. How would it feel to live under a different bridge? Would it be any better? One sunny morning, three billy goats strolled along the riverbank and came to a stop near his bridge. The troll welcomed them and asked if they'd like to cross his bridge. The biggest billy goat said, where does it lead? I don't know, the troll replied, but I've been told the grass is greener over that way. The troll and the three billy goats looked at the grass beneath their feet. It was a rich shade of green, and early morning dewdrops still twinkled in the light of the sun. The troll and the goats lifted their heads and looked across the river to the grass on the other side. It was the same shade of rich green, and there was also a scattering of dewdrops nestling in the green covering. Seeing the confused looks on the goats' faces, the troll let out a jolly chuckle and said, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. The grass is just as green on that side, but travellers tell me all the time that the grass is greener over there, so it must be true. Would you like to go over my bridge and see for yourselves? The biggest billy goat gave the matter some serious thought. Then he stepped onto the wooden bridge and trip-trapped over it. When he reached the other side, he lowered his head and sniffed the grass. He nibbled a clump of it, chewing slowly and thoughtfully. When he'd finished eating... He trip-trapped all the way back over the bridge to join his brothers and the troll. The troll asked what he thought about the grass. Was it greener? Or fresher smelling? Did it taste sweeter? The biggest billy goat wasn't sure, so he asked his brothers to go over the bridge to inspect the grass. The middle billy goat trip-trapped across, followed closely by the smallest billy goat. They sniffed the grass, tasted the grass, and the little one even rolled around in it to get a good feel for its texture. Once their inspection had been completed, they returned to the troll and their older brother. They said they couldn't tell if the grass was better on the other side or not, the three billy goats turned their faces to the troll and asked if he could help them make a decision. Should they cross the bridge and go in search of that greener grass, or stay where they were? The troll had never been asked for help before, but he did want the goats to make the decision that was right for them. As he thought about the matter, a question came to his mind. He asked the biggest billy goat what he would be leaving behind if he did go over the bridge in search of greener pastures. My home, the biggest billy goat said with a smile. My home is cosy and comfortable. I love living there. The middle billy goat said he would miss his garden as it was the place where he felt most at peace. The youngest billy goat told the troll he would miss the fields around his home. 
He liked running through the tall grass and rolling down the hills and jumping in the puddles after a rain shower. The troll scratched his chin. He didn't know what to say to the goats. Would they be happier if they travelled over the bridge? And should he really be the one telling them what to do? The biggest billy goat could see the troll was having trouble making a decision and invited him to their home and to stay for a while. Perhaps that would help him decide what to say. The troll had never been invited to anyone's home before. It was a great honour and made him feel warm inside. He thanked the goats and said he would like that very much. The goats led the troll through fields and to a valley nestled at the foot of rolling hills. A cosy-looking cottage looked out onto a large garden which was full of colourful flowers and tall fruit trees. The biggest billy goat invited the troll into the cottage and asked if he'd like anything to drink. The troll was partial to tea and asked the goat if he had any, but only if it wasn't any trouble. The goat said a cup of tea sounded perfect and soon made a couple of hot drinks for the troll and himself. With a cup in his hand, the troll was shown around the house. The living room was spacious with a handmade rug in front of the fire. Three rocking chairs in different sizes were placed around the rug. Along the side of the walls were thickly upholstered sofas, which looked very inviting and the ideal place to take an afternoon nap. Photographs of the smiling goats adorned the walls. Cushions and soft blankets lay on the chairs and sofas, adding to the cosy feel of the room. The troll said he felt like he could spend many happy hours there. The biggest billy goat nodded, and said it was an extremely relaxing place to be. He took the troll into the kitchen next, where a batch of cookies were cooling on a baking tray. The delicious aroma made the troll's mouth water. Without any hesitation, the goat offered the troll a cookie. The troll took it with thanks. The cookie was still warm and it melted in his mouth. He washed it down with the refreshing tea. The billy goat showed the troll around the rest of the cottage. The troll looked with delight at the three bedrooms and their large windows which gave spectacular views of the surrounding gardens and hills beyond. The cheerful bathroom was painted yellow and blue, and it had an enormous bathtub. It looked large enough even for the troll, and he pictured himself wallowing in warm waters full of bubbles. Let me show you my favourite room, the billy goat said with a smile. It's a lovely place to rest on an evening and it gives the best view of the sunset. He took the troll into a sun-warmed conservatory at the back of the house and asked him to take a seat on the sofa. The goat and troll leaned back on soft cushions and gazed out through the large window at the view outside. The green-covered hills were dotted with patches of purple heather and clusters of daisies. Rabbits bounded joyfully along, stopping occasionally to nibble the grass. Trees in the garden swayed gently in the breeze. The billy goat let out a happy sigh of contentment. He said this 
is where the family gathered at the end of the day and chatted about what they've been up to. And as night drew nearer, they would watch the sunset and the changing colours of the evening sky. The troll told the goat he had a beautiful home and couldn't imagine there being a better one across the bridge. Do you think I should look anyway? The biggest billy goat asked. That's up to you. No one else can make that decision for you, certainly not me, the troll said gently. He felt the need to apologise. I'm sorry for thinking that I could. I hope I haven't wasted your time. The goat smiled. It's been a pleasure to have you here. I'm glad you like my home. I like it too. I'm very happy living here. You are welcome to come back any time. A feeling of warmth ran through the troll again. It made him smile. The two friends looked at the relaxing view whilst drinking their tea. After a while, the troll said, I'd better return to my bridge. Thank you for inviting me into your home. The biggest billy goat escorted him out of the cottage and told the troll to visit them again soon. As the troll walked away from the cosy home, the middle-sized billy goat met him and asked the troll to look at his garden. Perhaps there will be a better garden across the bridge, the goat said. What do you think? The troll knew it wasn't his decision to make, but asked the goat if he could show him around his garden. The goat's face lit up with delight. He trotted off and asked the troll to follow him. They soon arrived at an apple tree. The goat looked up through the branches, which were laden with rosy apples. With wonder in his voice, he said, I wasn't sure this tree and the others would grow at all. I planted some seeds years ago and left them to do their thing. I watered them often and talked to them sometimes. And when the first stems appeared, I put some supports behind them to make sure they wouldn't fall over. And look at it now. The apples are delicious. You must take some home with you. I've got some pear trees too. I'll collect some pears for you too. That's very kind of you. Thank you. The troll was touched by the thoughtfulness of the goat. The middle-sized goat led the troll through flower beds of red and pink roses and tall, swaying sunflowers. They walked by the side of a vegetable plot that was overflowing with cream-coloured cauliflowers, plump pea pods and cucumbers as big as the troll's arms. The goat's eyes twinkled with joy and love for his garden and his enthusiasm filled the troll's heart with happiness. When they came to the end of their garden tour, the billy goat asked the troll if a better garden could be found on the other side of the bridge. What do you think? the troll asked. The goat looked over the rows of vegetables and the beds of rainbow-coloured blooms. His attention rested on the fruit trees, which were abundant with apples and pears. His voice was full of love as he said, I don't need to go anywhere. This is where I belong. This is where I feel at peace. It's a beautiful garden and I can't imagine there's a better one anywhere else, the troll said. 
I could stay here for hours, but I'd better get back to my bridge. The goat said he would pack some fruit for the troll and a bunch or two of flowers, and maybe some vegetables, as the cauliflowers were particularly tasty that year. He added, You can come back any time, as I'd love to show you how the garden changes throughout the year. The troll said he would like that very much, and thanked the goat. With a basket full of gifts, the troll walked away from the garden. He hadn't got very far when he was met by the smallest billy goat, who asked if he had time to play. He gave the troll a cute smile, which was hard to resist. It seemed the kind of day which was perfect for playing games, so the troll put the basket down and said yes to the little goat. The goat cheered before bounding through the grass and calling out to the troll to keep up. The troll had to jog a little, but he didn't mind as it felt good to be out in the sunshine. The smallest billy goat stopped at a large expanse of grass and told the troll they could run through it, but what animal would he like to be? The troll wasn't sure how to respond to that question, so he shrugged and said it was up to the goat. The smiling goat suggested they pretend to be frogs and hop through the grass, or perhaps be like bunnies and jump over the small rocks, or maybe they could open their arms and pretend to fly like birds. The troll thought they all sounded like good choices and suggested they do all of them. The day flew by as the troll got lost in joyful games with the billy goat, who was small in appearance, but his imagination was as vast as the clear blue sky above them. The other goats saw what fun the troll and the little goat were having and they joined in with the games. The afternoon hours sped by. Any thoughts about the bridge and the greener grass on the other side were entirely forgotten. The day wore on and the sun began to move lower in the sky. Noticing the lengthening shadows across the grass, the troll collected the basket and said he really must be getting back to his bridge. The goat said they would walk back with him to keep him company. Along the way, the biggest billy goat asked the troll if he'd ever thought about crossing the bridge to see what was on the other side. The troll admitted he had thought about it, but being with the goats had made him realise how much he liked his bridge. He it was where he felt happy. Beneath the bridge he loved on meeting travellers every day and falling asleep to the gentle sound of the flowing river. When they arrived at the bridge, the troll said, Perhaps there is something better on the other side, and maybe the grass is greener over there, but I'm quite content where I am. The goats nodded in understanding. They bade the troll a good night and said he must come and visit them very soon. The troll said he would. The troll watched them walk away and thought how lucky he was to have made some new friends that day. He put his hand on the familiar wooden rail of the bridge and smiled. It really was a lovely bridge. He liked it very much. He went underneath it and settled himself into his snug sleeping area. 
through the gaps in the wood above him, he saw the bright light of the moon and the twinkling of the stars. There was nowhere else he'd rather be. He was happy and content right where he was. With a smile on his face, he closed his eyes and drifted off into a peaceful sleep, peaceful and snug under his bridge. <laughs>